Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great, uh, finally freaking Friday. It's been a busy, busy week here. Going back home this afternoon, we'll be in the man cave for our live stream tonight as we count down to the NFL draft. I can't believe that. Two weeks from now, we'll be in day two of the draft. Day two. And, of course, we'll have two picks in the second round, unless the Cowboys trade back and pick up some extra picks. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited. But I have to feel like the Cowboys and Jerry Jones, that Jerry Jones is all alone now with Dan Snyder. See, here's the thing, that Dan Snyder and Jerry Jones were those two kind of maverick owners that now Dan Snyder, who was originally thought to be Jerry Jones's protege, um, although he didn't quite learn from the master, you know, you know, it's kind of like um, Dark Vader. Dark Vader was learning from Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he ended up going to the dark side or the darker side, I should say. And I think that was pretty much what Dan Snyder did. You know, he was that fallen angel that became the devil, the, the devil. And now he's gone. So, you know, I, I, I have so many emotions and so many thoughts about the commanders. Um, it had gotten to the point where everybody hated Dan Snyder. You know, most places fight to be able to get the stadiums and things. You know, you look at um, where Nationals Park is in Washington, how it has literally changed that area. That was like Buzzard Point. Now you've got the uh, uh, Nissan, I think it's the Nissan, or sorry, the Audi soccer stadium that's built over there. And all of the condos and all of the stuff, it's literally transformed that area and stuff. And DC basically said, no way, no how. We don't want you even though they have the RFK site where they're about to implode that stadium. They're like, no, we don't want you, bro. We, we, we don't want you. No, thank you. Um, Maryland had a spot that they were offering across from the MGM. He didn't want that one, although the NFL wanted it because they're like, you're right across the street from the MGM. And Maryland basically said, no, nah, you know what? We'll fix the area around there, but we're not giving you a cent. Virginia originally said, hey, you know, we got a billion dollars, but then went through and said, no, you're really not viable. We're not giving you any money. Now, there will be a bidding war for locations to want to build a new stadium for the commanders. And let's be clear here. That stadium, you know, we, we've been there every year for like the last seven years, except for the COVID year seeing the Cowboys versus Washington. And that stadium, literally, my seats were ripped. It's just bad. You see rust coming off the walls and everything else. And so, you know, it's still going to take several years before that new stadium is built. And I'm hoping that until the other one is built, that that one doesn't come to the ground. But $6 billion. And I'm trying to understand how they're worth six billion dollars. The stadium is a fixer upper. No, actually, you know, listen, I'm working on a two hundred year old house, which a lot of people said should have been bulldozed over. That place definitely should be bulldozed over. I, there's no saving that thing. It, it's terrible. Um and now Jerry Jones's little mini me, mini me, mini me is gone. Hmm. Now, there's still questions abound, of course, will the prosecution of him and uh, so on, will that go on? He, you know, he's hoping that I sell the team and leave town, then I don't have to worry about this anymore, but I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the case. We'll have to wait and see how that works out. Anyway, the Cowboys have been... The no drama team. <clears throat> and it's making it hard for us YouTubers. There are no breaking 
crazy stories about the Cowboys this offseason. You know, where you, you had the Randy Gregory fiasco that was the gift that kept giving. You remember that? You know, at first it was like, oh, the Cowboys, you know, Randy Gregory goes to Denver and stuff, right? But then it was like, whoa, wait, wait. Gregory's talking with Jerry Jones and crew. Oh, oh the Randy Gregory deal is, is just about done and about to be signed. And then the next thing you heard was Randy Gregory is in Denver. We're like, the fuck, what happened? And then you had the Jerry Jones spinning it, you know? Well, you know, and, and the, the whole clause that they wanted to put in there where they could basically retroactively take back all the money that they paid them and stuff, you know? And then we had the debate on how many of the players actually had to sign this thing. And then you had Jerry Jones talking about, you know, we looked at that thing and, and we looked at that deal and we said El Paso, you know? And we had the Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson and the punter. But this offseason, it's crazy because even Catboy, uh, can, can we still call him Catboy? Catboy hasn't been out there. And I mean, he's made diligent moves, you know, that are cost effective and actually doing a good job. But we don't look at him as Catboy like we did. It's been a crazy offseason. It's been a crazy offseason. Still don't have clarification on Aaron Rodgers, you know, if he is actually going to be a Jet. We don't have clarification on if the San Francisco 49ers are still trying to grab him and so on. It's been crazy. And if you had asked me going into the offseason, if I saw Odell Beckham Jr. with the Baltimore Ravens, I would have said, huh? But that's exactly what we have happen. Let's listen to Rich Eisen and his thoughts on that one. Deuced is a Baltimore Raven. Who'd have thunk it? Not me. Who'd have thunk it? Man, even Not the me. Ravens, even Der Eric DaCosta admitted they were an underdog in the race for I, it's so crazy. his services. But as Albert Breer pointed out, you remember that buy it now button that you had on the old eBay to, to bypass the, the bidding process? Well, they certainly hit the buy it now button. $18 million contract, 15 of it guaranteed, 3 million of it filled with apparently very reachable incentives. And then there's the whole question, of why would he do this other than the money? I'll forget, just place the money aside. If he's not a mercenary straight up, why would he go to a place where receivers don't have thousand yard seasons where they've not had then you're a not a failure pro bowl receiver drafted mm -hmm. they're the only franchise to not draft a pro bowl wide receiver the baltimore Ravens. why would you go there now they do have a new offensive coordinator in todd munkin and of course the question is is who's going to be the quarterback is it going to be lamar or not and the, the obvious question for odell did you receive any assurances that Lam from lamar that he'd be showing up if you signed in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Before you signed, you didn't get any assurances from Lamar that uh, you got to keep playing together this year? I uh, didn't get any assurances or anything. You know, life's uncertain. Um, I think that, you know, the, we, don't, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, or, you know, we only know what's happened in the past. So, to me, it just was excited about the possibility of that. You know, my thoughts would be that he would be here. I know that you know, these two want him to be here. Um, and... No, at the end of the day, that's that's going to be up to them. Was that Dr. DeRozan in the back there? Didn't throw him off. Mm. Just joking. I'm trying to weave the story of the day in. <laughs> Look, I told everybody when he signed, I said it, and I meant it. That part of the reason why this signing is so crucial for Baltimore is it gives another voice to the message they have been trying to say to Lamar for yep. weeks now. Come back. Come in. Let's deal with it. Come home. Or we'll figure it out. And that voice that's been telling him about it was the owner, we assume, coach, general manager. Now it's Odell giving voice to that. 
a different voice in the room and one that Lamar might listen to more despite the business deal he's trying to arrange. And sure enough, that actually happened mm -hmm. for real during the press conference. I mean, if you look at the other situations I was going into, the, everything was uncertain, you know? And it, like I say, life's uncertain. Um, obviously, I would assume that it, it's going to work out. You know, I have that, that faith and that hope. And um, Lamar, I know if you're watching, you know, you know I, I would love to, to love to get to work with you. I'll, I'll talk to these guys over here, and um, you know, hopefully that gets done. You know, I, I think... When you, when you think about the Ravens, you definitely think about Lamar, and I know that that's something, you know, I was excited about that possibility, and um, life's, life's not certain, you know, just to keep it short. He addressed Lamar. That's what I'm talking about. Odell, the it's negotiator. Penny, especially since he's like, I'll talk to them too, and Lamar knows he's got his best interest in mind. So add him to Meek Mill to the list of people who are trying to, you know, operate on his behalf. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, I know, I know that sounds like I'm just being facetious, but that's hmm. valuable. Very just valuable. I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. So Eric DaCosta was asked, how, 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 you know, have you spoken to Lamar since the trade request? That Lamar let everyone know exists. Odell is the middleman. The minute Harbaugh's butt hit the seat at the owners' meeting to talk to the media, this is what the cost had to say. Well, I have not talked to Lamar since the signing. Um, there's been interaction along the way. Um, you know, Lamar's in our plans. We love Lamar. Our feelings about Lamar have not changed one bit since the end of the season. Uh, we're hopeful still that we'll get a long-term deal done. He's the right player for this team to lead us to where we want to be. I think the locker room knows that. The organization knows that. I think the fan base knows that. So it's ongoing. Um, but I can't think of a situation where we wouldn't think that our best team is with Lamar Jackson on the team in September. Yeah, they've been consistent about that. So, like I said, signing Odell, it gives the fan base the message we, we get it. We, we, we know you watched last year, even when Lamar was healthy, and then it got even worse when he went out. Wide receivers catching touchdowns was like a comet in the sky. It just didn't happen. It was rare to see. It really was. And fans are like, what are we doing? When are we going to get somebody who we know? And Patriots fans, you, you went through that a lot, even with Brady there. Like, it's, it's a lot of, you know... Hello, my name is name tags that fans had to learn who these guys were and trust the process and Rache Caldwell of the world, you know, and then Randy Moss, boom. Hey. All of a sudden, Brady's throwing 50 touchdown passes in a season. I mean, so, and that's not an exaggeration. That's well, that the number. Literally happened. He hit. Mm -hmm. So the Ravens fans feel that they're heard. And now you got a guy not named Bashadi DeCosta or Harbaugh telling Lamar, come on. I got your best interest in mind. Come on. And his name's Odell Beckham. And the rest of Hard the wide receiver group in the NFL who might be like, I'm not going to Baltimore. Oh, wait, who went there? Yeah. Check those boxes. And I understand contract's expensive. He hasn't played. He also said that his knee was shot when he came to Los Angeles. So I guess it was like a ticking bomb that went off, unfortunately, for him in the Super Bowl. But at least it went off when it did. Because he was already in the Super Bowl and was on road to being the MVP of that damn thing before it gave way. So I know there's lots of questions about it. And then contractually, it's something that, you know, boy, the front office has lost their minds to do it. But it's more than just a contract signing. It's interesting that Odell is now the hostage negotiator. Crazier things happen. All right, good people, we will be bringing you anything and everything on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.